So we're going to go ahead and look at increase, decrease, and rate of change. And I'm going to go with increase and decrease first. So we're looking for intervals of increase and intervals of decrease. And one of the first things we did was we identified that axis of symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and put that axis of symmetry. In. The reason why I'm going to do that is because you can tell automatically that it divides this um, graph right in half. And it lets us see a few things. So we read a graph just as a heads up, from left to right. And we have to figure out what is happening from left to right. And if we were to start on the left-hand side over here, uh, we'd be down at the bottom of this graph. And as we move over to the right, we actually are moving up, increasing, and then down, decreasing. So you can actually tell there's actually two there's one graph or one equation, but there's actually two things happening here, okay? So we're gonna increase on this side, we are going to decrease on this side. So we can write that increase and that decrease. So first of all, I like to keep in mind that down here is negative infinity and up here is positive infinity. Um, and so when we are increasing, we are moving along the x-axis, and as we move along that x-axis right here, the graph is going up, and it does so until we get to this value of 2, because that's when it peaks out. So I'm going to say the increase would be from negative infinity all the way to 2. Okay, And then there's a decrease that's happening. Well, we notice that that decrease is happening as we keep going this way. We are working our way down. Okay, and that is our decrease. So we start at the value of two right here, and then it begins to decrease. So we start at two, and then the graph decreases, and it does that until infinity. So as we go out here towards infinity, this thing just keeps on decreasing. <coughs> Once we have that, I can go ahead and look at the rate of change, and I can actually assign the rate of change to the increase and the decrease. So one of the ways we can identify this is understanding, hey, this is a line, okay? And so um, since it's a line, we know we're talking about slope and we can real easily trace it out. We can find some points on there. We can say, hey, well, there's a point right there. Maybe there's a point right there. Hey, look at there's a point right there and there's a point right there and we just keep finding points. And then we look at the step, if you remember that rise over run rise over run, rise over run, rise over run. And what's happening is it looks like we go one, two, three steps up and then one step over consistently. So the rate of change is, remember, rise over run. And that would be, in this case, well, three over one or just three. But now, so the slope over here is three, but check it out. Over here, it's going down. So we're going to write the slope is negative three. It's the opposite. So we actually have two rates of change. We have a positive three and a negative three. 